just a house of bricks and stone, but it's a place that is greater than anything that this whole world with its rich jazz is offering. That's jealousy. All my hopes and imaginings Heaven's a special place A special place Thank you, Lord, for a heavenly home A place where peace and joy abide For sorrow, no space for sin, where only love and contentment can enter in. A place where time lasts forever and angels sing, heaven's a special place. Welcome to the Tracy Hamlin Show. I'm Tracy Hamlin, an international recording artist and owner of the Sweet Jazz Concert Series. I'm super excited to announce that the next Sweet Jazz Concert is going to be on Saturday, August the 6th in Ashburn, Virginia at the Belmont Country Club. We're going to be featuring guitarist Eric Essex, the Quentin Walston Trio, and me, the Sweet Jazz Concert Series, we use music as a catalyst to give back to the community, in particular Loudoun County. We um, give back to the community via two music scholarships, as well as a donation to a local charity. And for more information, you can visit sweetjazzconcerts.com. My short song today is called A Place Called Home, and it's from my very first album entitled Seasons, and it's available on all digital platforms. The Tracy Hamlin Show is super excited to be a platform for quality talent and fabulous small businesses that you need to know about. On today's show, I'm delighted to have composer, pianist, and music educator, Quentin Walston. But first, we're going to kick things off with an amazing small business owner and voiceover artist from Loudoun County, Virginia. Welcome to the show, Rosa Howard. How are you today? I'm great, thank you so much. We're very excited to have you here. So first, can you tell us what is a voiceover artist? Sure, so when you think about, um, it's actually uh, voice actors. And when you think about voice, when you think about actors anyway, you think about that person in front of the screen, that actor who's on a movie or who's on a TV show might be easily recognizable. Well, a voiceover artist or voice actor is someone who's actually behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. um, you won't recognize that person's face because you probably will never see it. Mm -hmm. But, <clears throat> excuse me, you will recognize their voice from time to time. So it's that person who's voicing that commercial or that e-learning that you do on your job or that audiobook that you're listening to. Might be the person who's voicing the voice in the subway system as you ride it. Mm -hmm. um, it's the person behind the scenes, and uh, that's what voiceover, a voiceover artist is. And it's so interesting because we all hear it from, you know, whether, like you said, it's a, the train or the airport, or but nobody ever thinks, well, who is that? Where's that voice coming from? But we all take instruction. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> whatever you tell us to do. Now, <laughs> what inspired you to become a voiceover artist? Well, my inspiration came from, I completed... 30 plus years of good government service in the federal government, I retired. And I started thinking, what do I want my second act to look like? Mm -hmm. And I wanted that to be something that I loved, something I really enjoyed doing. And I wanted it to have flexibility. And I wanted not to have to punch a clock, not a nine to five. And I started thinking, what do I really, really love to do? And I love the performing arts. I've always loved singing and I've always loved acting. 
um, but didn't get to do much of that in the federal government. So when I um, started thinking about what my second act was going to look like, I started looking into voice acting and, and thought maybe this is something that I'd be able to do, something I'd enjoy doing, and that would give me some flexibility. Um, and that was basically my inspiration. So is there anything from your previous job that you're a, that was able that you're able to utilize and help you with your new business? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Previously, uh, my previous job, um, I worked in law enforcement, but I also worked in training. So mm -hmm. I taught classes, I was in front of people giving presentations, um, mm -hmm. and I brought all of those things with me into, into this career. Um, but also previously, I'd done a lot of other things that kind of helped prepare me to, uh, to be a voice actor. For instance, I was in Toastmasters and I was up in front of people and uh, did some community theater and plays and things like that. And all of those things, all of those things work together to help prepare me for this career. So I hear so much about Toastmasters. People are always recommending that it's a great place to go. Um, did you, you feel that it was very beneficial? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. I, I mean, it's been years ago, but I actually chartered um, a Toastmasters organization in Jackson, Mississippi years ago. And mm -hmm. um, it was very, very beneficial because it helps you uh, become more comfortable speaking in front of people, particularly with um, unscripted things. Mm -hmm. It teaches you to listen to how your speech patterns and it teaches you to not use fillers so much while you're speaking the ums and the ahs and those kinds of things. So it is very beneficial and I would recommend it to anyone who is interested in getting better at public speaking or just being more comfortable speaking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is wonderful. I'm definitely gonna check that out because I mean, not just me, but so many people that I hear speaking, it's, uh, um, well, um, um. Right, like, and in Toastmasters, like. <laughs> we used to have to pay a quarter for every uh or um that we did. So it, it helped you to stop doing that. So what is the name of your company? My company is Rosa Howard Voiceovers. Mm -hmm. I love, love, love that. Did you start your business before COVID or during COVID? I actually started my business in 2018 before COVID. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, while a lot of industries I know took a big hit during COVID and things kind of slowed down, we kind of ramped up in this industry a little bit because there was so much work, so many things coming out where uh, we were voicing public service, service announcements, mm -hmm. uh, things like that. So I really didn't uh, take much of a hit during COVID, but I did start in 2018. So when you're recording these commercials, you're doing everything just basically from your home, not necessarily in a recording studio? Yes. And, you know, years and years ago, voiceover work was done in the studio mm -hmm. well before I came into it. But now, if you don't have a recording studio in your home, you might not be very successful in this industry right now, mm -hmm. especially since COVID, right? When COVID happened, everything kind of shut down, studio shut down, people weren't recording. And I just remember hearing about big name actors who are also doing voice, voice work, who had to put studios in their homes very quickly because mm -hmm. uh, in order to keep working, they needed to have that studio in their home. So I do have a professional recording studio in my home with uh, professionally treated and uh, with the sound equipment and everything. I'm not there right now, as you can tell, I'm traveling, but that is one of the great benefits of this occupation is that you can take it with you on the road if you need to, so. Right, so when you say professionally treated, what does that mean for our viewers? Well, what it means is that it's, it's not a wide open space where your sound is reverberating and hitting all the walls and bouncing back and forth. Um, it has a special acoustic treatment on the walls and everything so that when I'm speaking and doing commercials, uh, what they're hearing is my voice and they're not hearing echoes and it doesn't sound like I'm in a tunnel or a hole or something. Oh. Um, that's what it means to have a professionally treated space. So when deciding to become a voiceover artist, how do you prepare? What kind of training do you have for this? You know what, because people, I've had people call me or email me and I'm happy to talk to anyone about this. And what mm -hmm. I always tell them is start out with research. Mm 
Mm -hmm. There are so many uh, free uh, sources of information out there through the internet, through Facebook groups, especially Facebook groups, other groups that you can just research because you need to understand what the industry is all about. And mm -hmm. you need to understand about, um, you need to understand how not to get into some uh, not financially beneficial situations. <laughs> because in any industry, you know, there are people out there that might take a little advantage so right. you need to do your research so that you understand uh, where you need to go and what you need to do to make this work for you. Now, once you've done your research, I would suggest that you get a vocal coach. You get a, mm -hmm. a voiceover coach, someone to help you understand the industry better. Taking all the research that you have, um, that's gonna lead you to your vocal coach, someone who's reputable and uh, right. has a good reputation in the industry. But that vocal coach is gonna teach you about delivery. You know, I hear a lot of people say, hey, anybody can do that. It's just reading. And it's not just reading. It's called voice acting for a reason, because you have to know how to deliver lines. You have to know what emotions that you're trying to express in the piece. And you have to get all of that across in a short 30 second, 60 second, sometimes 15 second time span. Well, I'm so I'm going to interject just for a quick sec, because it's time for us to go to commercial break, but I definitely sure. want to pick up where you left off. So we are chatting it up with voiceover artist Rosa Howard. We're going to take a short break and we'll be right back for the Tracy Hamlin show.